This is a pocket wheel. I'm Amelia Garapoli, and I'm here to show you a new piece that John McAvoy has made for this wheel. It's a quill. This, of course, is the regular bobbin setup. So the first thing I need to do before I put my quill on is take this off. So I'm going to unthread my yarn. Um, fold it over on itself to hold the twist. Wind that yarn onto the bobbin. Then I can take the flyer off. and hold the brake band so I don't pull it and take the bobbin off. And now I'm ready to put the quill on. This is the quill. It has um, a little lock screw in it, so it's going to rotate in time with the flyer. That means technically we don't need the brake band on. If you want to leave your brake band on, you can put it in this groove and just leave it very loose because you really don't want any braking. Now, I prefer to take mine off, so I'll do that in just a minute. But first, I need to locate the set screw and take one of my axle wrenches and tighten this down onto the flyer. Okay. And then to take the brake band off, I can just pull the little nut out, take all this off, and bring this off where the spring is carefully. We don't want to stretch the spring. And then I can keep that with my flyer when I'm ready to spin on my bobbin again. Now, when we want to spin on this, we might want to spin an art yarn, we might want to spin a cotton. I'm a big cotton spinner, so my basket of cotton is here with natural brown, natural white, kettle dyed, space dyed, um, and this is what I call my exhausted bath dye, where it's not all one solid color. Um, those are all really nice. You have to use direct dyes on cotton or natural dyes. They don't take acid dyes. Um, there are also blends that I like. This is a blend with flax. That's nice because it's a bit more uh, chewy than just a straight cotton. So it's got some grab in it when you spin on it. Um, and then I also like these striped colors that are striped long ways. This is a natural white cotton and a cotton blended with reclaimed blue jeans, which are also cotton. <laughs> Um, that's nice because you can see the twist when you're spinning. Okay? There's also cotton on the seed, which usually we will card into punis, and you might also be able to buy punis or create them yourself. Um, they tend to um, be really tight and they tend to spin a really nice fine cotton for you. But first I need a leader. I could try to start without a leader, and I like to, but it can be difficult to master that skill, so having some thread is really your best bet for when you're first starting to learn. So I'm gonna pull off a pretty long length and fold it in half. And then I take the loop end and I lay that over the flyer, the quill here. And I bring the other ends through the loop. But that's only tight one way. Okay, it's only tight this way. So I need to have another half hitch that's tight the other way. So I'll bring a loop over the loose direction and bring the ends through that loop. So I have two half hitches. Now I know this thread is really small, <laughs> so if you go to my blog, Ask the Bellwether, you'll see the same technique used with a bobbin leader with nice big thick red acrylic thread. Okay? Acrylic yarn, rather. Now we're going to let this barber pull up. Okay? When you start your spinning, the leader barber pulls up and the twist enters when it starts flicking off the tip. You can see that flicking. Okay? Um, and we are going to have it be moving clockwise. So I take a length of cotton, and this is really the fun part about cotton spinning is cotton join is one of the fun parts, that and long draw. You lay the thread over the cotton and put your thumb on it, and then you'll start treadling. Then you see the twist coming up off the tip. You see it flicking there, I'm sort of holding it a bit loosely here. There we go. There we go, come on. Get it going. And once it starts grabbing, I give it a little tug to see if it's holding on to the, the fiber. Yeah, there it goes. And you want to keep treadling pretty quickly because you do need a fair bit of twist in cotton. There, that's grabbed on pretty nicely to that leader now. And I can start doing a long draw here where my lower hand is letting twist in and my upper hand is pulling back to let more fiber turn into yarn. Okay. One of the tricks about long draw is that the thick spots, 
tend to not be fiber, but there you go, I've made a break. So I'm gonna take that piece out and we'll do another join. There we go. The thick spots aren't yarn and the thin spots are. That's where I was before I broke my yarn. <laughs> so what you want to do is get a decent length and then you can give it a little tug and you should see the thick spots stretch out, not the thin spots. And then put a little bit more twist in because you have more thin spots now and do it again. And you can see there, although you might not be able to see that well in the video, that the thick spots are becoming thinner spots. Once you get a length that you like the general overall consistency of it, you put a little bit more twist in and what you really want to feel is that it starts to tug because it's making it all shorter from all the twist that's in it. Once you have that nice high level of twist in, you're ready to wind it onto the quill. For that, you reverse direction, okay, get it going the wrong way and then go clockwise. And I usually hold my finger down here so I can get it to go on back and forth, little X's until I barber pull it up. And I know that's really quick. <laughs> Now, one thing you may want to practice when you start spinning cotton on a wheel is the ability to know where to stop your feet so that when you start them, the wheel starts going the right direction, right? So if I stop here, I want my wheel to go clockwise while I'm spinning. Get those thick spots out. Oh, that looks nice. Oops, yep, and see there was, um, I didn't let enough twist in. And you notice I'm just taking these bits out. They've lost too much twist to try to turn them into yarn. I can recard them later into a puni and spin them again. So they're not completely wasted. They're just too soft of a twist to try to join back in. Too much twist to be easy to join in. There we go. There we go. So build up the twist again. And I feel my hand get that little bit of tug. I'll stop and I'll reverse direction so that I undo the barber pull, bring a finger over here, get it going clockwise again, holding it to wind it on, and then letting it barber pull back up. Okay. And then I'm off and running again. And you might notice I start out at a fairly sedate pace with my throttling while I'm building this length up, pinching and releasing my lower hand, and stretching my upper hand back, 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 back. Now, ergonomically, you want to be careful about this shoulder. Um, a full extension is usually best, but if wherever you're comfortable taking the extension. No one says you have to be holding your hand up here like you're flagging down the taxi. Um, that's just how I do it. Okay. Building up the twist again, and you can hear a couple of things right now. You can actually hear this O-ring, but you can also hear this flicking off the tip, which is kind of neat. Because that's where all the twist is coming in to my yarn. Okay. Then reverse direction this guy to go the other way to get that um, barber pole off use my finger as a guide to help it come on up and down and what I'll do is I'll gradually fill the quill starting by building it up at the base and then building it up a little further each time until I have a nice full um, quill of yarn you might ask well how do you get the yarn off <laughs> usually I will wind it onto a weaving bobbin um, or a spinning wheel bobbin and if I want to ply, I'll fill up two of them, and then I can ply it. And the really neat thing about plying cotton is, sure, you could ply it back onto the quill, but you don't have to. Once you have a single yarn, it's very straightforward to put those two bobbins on a lazy cake and to spin it with a regular flyer for plying. Okay? Unless you really just love your quill and want to do everything on the quill. I won't stop you. I've done the same thing. <laughs> You know, I like having single tool projects where all the yarn is spun on a particular spindle or a particular wheel configuration, like this one. Lately, what I've, what I've been doing is spinning singles of cotton to stay singles for weaving. Um, I really like the effect of single spun um, woven fabric. So that's an introduction to the quill on the pocket wheel. Thank you.